Yesterday we looked at the history of dye stuffs and we also looked at the functioning of light and its relation with color. In today's lecture which deals with classification of natural dyes and synthetic dyes based on their structure and by color, how they are classified, we will try to look at this aspect of dyes because it is important to know that the dyes have a systematic classification whether it is natural dye or synthetic dye based on their uh, chemical structure they are designed in uh, they are categorized in such a manner that they have to be put under different classification according to their structure or there is a classification according to their color. Natural dyes, if we try to look at natural dyes, one can get coloring matter from almost all vegetable matter. However, only a few of these sources yield colorants which can be extracted and work out to be commercially viable. Similar in the case of colorants obtained from animal origin. So, it is true that every colored substance in nature can yield color that means color can be extracted from any vegetable source or any animal source if they are colored. But how does it react with the material whether it is a dye which is to be considered for commercial purpose whether it is a dye which is in substantial quantity is what actually makes the viability of the use of that dye. Primarily three primary colors are required to get any hue or color. This type of approach has been worked out for synthetic dyes as well. However, in the case of natural dyes, the dyeing procedures are different for different dyes and they cannot be blended to get required color easily. So, it is important to understand that there are three basic colors and these three basic colors or hue are what actually they make the whole gamut of colors. Now, whether it is a series or, or a dye from synthetic dye series or whether it is a natural dye component is what matters. How and why natural dyes are different? Nevertheless, while looking for different colors, one finds that it is better to have a limited number of dyes with good fastness properties rather than having too many colors or sources with limited fastness properties. Now, it is very important for a dye to be having some qualities particularly the fastness quality. If suppose I dye a cloth with turmeric and turmeric is considered to be a fugitive dye. Fugitive means that it does not hold to the fabric or material very well. It is washed off in one go. Now, in such a case why and how natural dyes are different? Let us try to look at this aspect that what makes natural dye different from synthetic dyes. Nevertheless, while looking for different colors, one finds that it is better to have limited colors of dyes with good fastness properties rather than having too many colors or sources with limited fastness properties. So, now you see that uh, whether there is a choice of having fewer dyes but their fastness properties is good or there should be larger number of dyes with, with very poor fastness property. Obviously, the first option is better. I will give you an example. Like for example, if turmeric is used for cotton dyeing, it is a fugitive dye. A fugitive dye means that a dye which runs off in water while washing. So, it does not adhere to the fabric and the color is very, uh, the fastness property is very poor. 
and the color runs off. So, therefore, turmeric is not considered to be a good dye. So, in order to have a good dye from the natural dye series, the main criteria is to have good fastness properties. Now, these fastness properties include light fastness, washing fastness, perspiration fastness. These are three tests that a dye must uh, go through in order to be proven that it is a good dye for fabric. While selecting the proper palette of color, one would like to have at least one blue, one red and one yellow to start with. As I earlier said that there are three primary colors, one is red, the other one is blue and the third one is yellow. Out of these three colors, many, many colors can be generated by proper combination. Due to the limited number of natural dyes available, the correct choice of dye is very important. Information of some important natural dyes will be shown on the next slide. So, it is very important to keep in mind that these are the three hue or color which are important while selecting a dye. And what are the three hue colors? Blue, red and yellow. Now, looking at the blue dyes, the color index lists only four natural dyes that is natural indigo, sulfonated natural indigo, kum that is particularly found in Manipur and the flowers of Japanese Tsukusa used for making Aobana paper. Now, these are the four main sources of blue dye which are popularly used. Of course, blue dye can be extracted from many other flowers, but are they very good in their fastness properties? As I said in the beginning itself that vegetables having colored part that means colored flowers or fruits or bark or stem or leaves can yield color. But the question is that do these extracted color adhere to the fabric and do they have a good fastness property is what is of importance. And if they pass in this test of fastness property they are good material and they can be considered in the series of natural dyes. The only viable choice among the blue natural dye is indigo. Natural indigo is obtained by fermenting the leaves of various species of indigo ferra, running off the liqueur and oxidizing it to precipitate the dye. So, it is not that oh, the direct extract can be used as a dye there is a certain amount of procedure, an oxidation reduction reaction and only after it is uh, kind of um, oxidized, the dye actually comes up with its true color. Wood, which is Isetis tinctoria is another important source of indigo. The plant is grown mostly in North Europe and British Isles. With the synthesis of indigo in, 90, in 1880 and its successful commercial exploitation in 1897 by BASF, it is a big chemical dye company, the production of natural dye decreased. The king of natural dyes went into oblivion. There are some signs of its revival. The current demand of indigo in US is estimated to be around 800 tons per year, priced at about 20 million dollars. The main ingredient in natural indigo are indigo tin and indirubin. Now, the structures I will show you in a while, but it is important for you to understand how important is this dye which has been used from primitive time and it is because it has a very good coloring agent. But this coloring agent requires a little bit of processing on the fabric. 
it is not that simply the extract is taken and the fabric is dipped and that is it and it takes the color on it. It has good fastness property and I was as I was telling you yesterday that the entire denim industry those who wear jeans and I am sure every one of you wear jean must know that all the jeans are dyed by this color which is either natural indigo or synthetic indigo. So, that is why it, there was because of the great demand of indigo, the natural indigo could not be supplied in that much demand and since the structure is a fairly simple structure, it could be easily synthesized in the year 1880 and finally, production of synthetic indigo was facilitated by a very big company uh, BASF in 1897. Now, we try to look at the structure. You see there are carbonyl groups and there is an NH group and there is aromatic ring. Yesterday, we were talking about how these functional groups or the chromophores, let us now not call them functional group, but chromophores. So, the chromophores here are CO and NH and then there is a benzene ring which is having delocalized electron and the CC double bond which is connecting the two indigo tin moieties together is all in conjugation. The more the conjugation, the more it shifts from colorless to colored compound. Similarly, the same uh, thing, uh, the same kind of uh, moieties, but they are joined in a little different orientation make the indigo rubin. So, you see that the structurally similar compound forms the very simplified structure of this natural dye and it can be also synthesized in the laboratory very readily. Red dyes. Now, let us try to look at the red dyes. The color index lists about 32 red natural dyes. I will come to color index in a while, but at least for the time being, you just understand that color index is a kind of cataloging numbering system. The prominent among them are madder, which is rubia tinctorum, mangista, which is rubia cordifolia, brazil wood or sapon wood, which is caselpenia sapon, and al, which is morinda, citrifolia, cochineal, which is coccus cacti, and lac dye, which is coccus lacci. Now, these are the various sources of red dye. Manjis or Indian madder is anthroquinone based red dye. The most important colorant in madder are the anthroquinones, which are alizarine, purpuroxanthine, rubiadin, mangistin, purpurin, and pseudopurpurin. So, these all make the color which is obtained from madder, Indian madder or mangist. Now, it is not that natural um, dyes occur in isolation molecule. They are always a combination of similarly structurally, uh, uh, you know, uh, similar compounds and they have structural detailing a little bit different from one another, but they have a basic skeleton which is similar and in this case the basic skeleton is anthroquinone. It is the functional groups on the anthroquinone main basic structure that differs in these variety of red dyes. Now, if you look at the structure, you will see that the simplified alizarine has two hydroxy which are ortho to each other. In the second case, the hydroxy are meta to each other. In the third case, there are two hydroxy which are meta and in between there is a methyl group. Similarly, in the fourth case, there are two hydroxy in the meta position, but there is a carboxylic group in the ortho position uh, or rather in the middle position. And similarly, we have the fifth molecule which has three hydroxy compounds, two ortho and one para. And there is the fourth 
fifth type of molecule which is uh, pseudo purpurin and it has a carboxylic group at the meta position. So, you see that these are slightly structurally different, but they all have one basic common uh, similarity and that is the anthroquinoid that is benzene carbonyl benzene ring which is to be noticed here. More red dyes are from the variety of brazeline which is which has a CI number natural red 24 and is the main coloring component from Caesalpenia echinata lamb that is the Brazil wood. It is as the name suggests the these wood variety must be available only there and that is why the name common name Brazil wood and Caesalpenia sapan wood or sapan wood. These two have very similar structure Brazilian as shown uh, in the figure and that gets oxidized to red bra Brazilian as indicated. Now, these compounds are the, the carbonyl compound does not have a very good color, but when it is in the enolic form Brazilian it is brightly red colored dye. <coughs> Red dye from the lag dye variety. This also, when we looked at the different types of red dyes, this was also one of the varieties which is isolated from the animal source. Lac is perhaps one of the oldest of all known red dyes. However, cochineal and kermes were widely used in the western world for the production of bright purple and red colors. The lac dye is extracted from lac, the resinous protective secretion of tiny insect Lucifera laca, which is a pest on a number of plants, both wild and cultivated. It secretes a thick resinous fluid, which envelops their bodies and secretion from a hard continuous and crustacean over the twigs. They contain only 1 to 2 percent of the dye. There are four coloring components in lac designated as lacaic acid A, B, C and E. Lacaic acid A being the most abundant, lacaic acid is called xanthocarmesic acid and it closely resembles carmesic acid in structure. Lag dye being an acid dye can be directly dyed on protein fiber such as wool and silk. It also produces very dark shades on nylon. The hues can be modified by postmodenting treatment with metal salts. The dye has very good light and washing fastness. So, you see that this also is not a single dye. It is a component made out of various types of lacaic acid A, B, C, D and E. Uh, and among them the A component is present in maximum and it is being secreted by a tiny insect called Lucifera laca. Now, this Lucifera laca insect can thrive on wild as well as uh, some of the cultivated plants and it secretes some kind of resinous fluid which encrusts the um, or which covers the twig and then from that it can be taken out and extracted. The extraction only gives 1 to 2 percent of the dye, but the dye is so rich in color that it is sufficiently uh, that very small quantity is required for dyeing because it is very rich in color. Now, if you try to look at the structure of lacaic acid, you will see that structures of lacaic acid where R is represented as CH2 NHCO CH3 and in the case of lacaic acid B, the R is represented by CH2 OH and in uh, lacaic acid C, it is R is represented by CH NH2 COOH and in the case of lacaic acid E, R represents CH2 NH2. 
So, it has a carboxylic acid moiety that is why it is an acid lacaic acid, but it also has an amino group which causes good adhesion to the fabric. Now, trying to understand what are the yellow dyes, let us try to look which are the categories of yellow dyes which come under the category of natural dyes. Yellow dye has been the most common color among the natural dyes. However, most of the yellow colorants are fugitive. I just gave you an example of turmeric. We saw that how you know turmeric uh, dye although it dyes very well, but it runs off in the first wash and by second wash no, no color is left on the fabric. So, such a dye will be considered as a uh, fugitive dye. However, most of the yellow colorants which are fugitive, so there is a big problem which yellow dye to choose and which is the, the dye that needs to be considered for yellow coloration of the fabric. The color index lists about 28 yellow dyes. Some of the most yellow uh, important yellow dyes are obtained from Burberry that is Berberis aristata, tesu flowers. I just mentioned yesterday about tesu flowers and the festive, festival time associated. Because it blooms at a particular basant uh, festival, it is extracted from the plant Butea frondosa and Kamala which is Malotus philippinensis. So, these are the few plants from which the yellow dye is popularly extracted, although 28 yellow dyes have been enlisted. Other sources of yellow dyes are black oak that is cucus, velutina, turmeric which is curcuma longa, weald which is reseda, lutila and Himalayan rhubarb which is rheum emodi. So, there are other sources, it is not the, just the ones which I mentioned. Some coloring matters are berberine, its derivatives, chrysophanic acid and lutealine. These are the main structural compounds in the yellow dyes. Of course, there are other, other types of structural details. These are just representative that is berberine is one which is from the berberis uh, aristata and uh, chrysophanic acid is present in tesu and lutealine is also present in many compounds because it is a very popular flavonone. Now, if you try to look at these compounds, you will see that the compound uh, 12 and 13 are basically the berberine uh, structures and the you know substituted berberine structures. Whereas, compound 14 is a typical compound uh, which is uh, uh, cryophenic acid, uh, chrysophenic acid and the compound 15 is the one which I was lutealine. Now, you see that all of them have popularly got or they have a common feature they, that they have more than one hydroxy group. So, there must be some reason for them to be a good dye because these oxochromes help in color enhancement and even in color adhesion. So, you now can understand that either a methoxy group or a hydroxy group can contribute well to become a good dye model. Now, there are some other dyes which needs to be uh, discussed structurally they are different. Dihydropyran dyes closely related to flavones in chemical structures are substituted dihydropyrans like the one shown here. Now, this dihydropyran also has hydroxy group, it has a carbonyl group and an enolic carbon. So, it has the potential of becoming a very good dye. Similarly, there are dye molecules which come under the category of anthrocyanidines. Anthrocyanidines, carrageenan obtained from bignonia chica is 
one dye, yeah, now again you will see that there is an O methoxy and there is a hydroxy group and there are aromatic systems which make the conjugation. Yesterday I was talking about what makes a dye a colored molecule, because only when a chemical has color, it at least can be categorized in the category of dyes. So, the, the bottom line of understanding the structure is that the dye must have an extended conjugated system. Yesterday what I, whatever I told, I am trying to show you through these structures that all these dye structures have many, many chromophores and they have equally a high number of oxochrome to add on to the color requirement. Coming to carotenoids, in these the color uh, is due to the presence of long conjugated double bond and anato and saffrons are the examples. Even anato and saffron, they give orange color and we know carotenoid, you have heard about carrots. Carrots are orangish red in color and that is because they have this beta carotene moiety and particularly I have taken this example of beta carotene because it has extended conjugation and it shows that it is having a, a lot of chromophores and these chromophores are nothing but double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond. And because the electrons are highly delocalized throughout the molecule, it absorbs in, in the, it moves on to higher wavelength, longer wavelength and reaches the orange red color of the visible uh, region of the electromagnetic radiation. So, these structural details are very important in deciding the color of the dye molecule, whether it is from the natural source or from the synthetic source. Now, let us consider a few synthetic dyes as well. Triaryl methane, methane dyes, these include the quinonoid arrangements as the actual chromophore, the quinonoid ring, but since all three benzene rings are equivalent, there can be rearrangement of the bonds and any of the benzene ring could take up this uh, rearrangement or arrangement. So, because triaryl, three aryl or aromatic rings are designed or connected to each other and there could be a lot of rearrangement arrangement in any one of these three rings. So, that makes a still extended conjugation. There are a large number of dyes used in histology, histology means staining in of the cells that fall into this category. A few examples are fuchsin, methyl violet, methyl blue, aniline blue. I am sure you must have heard the name of at least these dyes because they are very common staining dyes. Other dyes under the category of synthetic dyes fall in the category of anthroquinone. Here the quinoid, quininoid ring is seen as the middle of the three fused ring. For example, alizarine, just a while ago we saw the structure of alizarine and carmine. Xanthine is another class of dyes. Here the quininoid ring is the right hand. Uh, is the right hand on the three fused ring and the ring is tilted compared with the previous example. Examples of uh, xanthine dye would be eosine and xanthine itself. Thiazine, this is very similar to the previous example in overall structure, but the middle ring now has either a sulfur or a nitrogen as constituent atoms. This group contains many importance metachromatic dyes such as toluidine blue, methylene blue, azure A and so on. So, these are various types of structurally different dyes which come under the categories of either a anthroquinone dye or a xanthine dyes or triaryl methane dyes and so on. 
when we try to look at the chemical structure of the dyes, they are also categorized on the basis of whether they are acidic or basic or neutral. So, let us try to see the classification based on that. Basic dyes are cationic and will stain color anionic or acidic material obviously, because acid will stain basic or basic will stain acidic. So, in if it is a basic dye, it will stain the acidic dyes such as carboxylates, sulfates, many complex uh, carbohydrates are sulfated and phosphates, particularly the phosphates in nucleic acid. Most are used as nuclear stain and staining of cytoplasmic carboxyl group is deliberately suppressed by using a slightly acidic pH. Acidic substances that stain with basic dye are termed as basophilic, basophilic, base loving. So, basic dyes are very good for acidic material. Now, as what I mentioned a while ago, categorizing them into basic dyes, neutral dyes and acidic dyes. Let us try to look at what the acidic dyes and the neutral dyes are all about. Acidic dyes are anionic and will color cationic or basic groups such as amino groups. Most are used to stain proteins in the cytoplasm and connective tissues. Substances that stain with acid dyes are called acidophilic, obviously as the name suggests. Neutral dyes are simply compounds of basic and acidic dyes. In this case, both ions are colored. Such dye complexes will stain both nucleus and cytoplasm from the single dye bath. Romanesky stains are neutral dyes made from more complex mixtures. These are commonest dyes used in hematology. They are less common in histology, but still very useful and include Gizma, Leishman and Wright stains. Now, these particular classification come under the category when we are trying to look at staining of nucleus or cytoplasm. So, it is not that dye is only meant for fabric or dye is only meant to color the food. A dye can be used in various aspects and the dyes when they are used in uh, nucleic uh, uh, acid uh, dyeing or in cytoplasm or in, in, in a cell, then what is its role? It, the role will come from the acidic or the basic condition of the cytoplasm and therefore, they are uh, named or their nomenclature is based on the acidity or the basicity or the neutrality. Then there are some amphoteric dyes. Amphoteric dyes both having anionic and cationic group in the same molecule, that is why amphoteric, but these are on the same ion. Amphoteric dyes have both positively chargeable groups and negatively chargeable groups present on the molecule. Depending on the charge actually present, these dyes may interact as either positively charged ion basic dyes or negatively charged ion as acid dyes. So, you see that there are COO3 minus as well as NH2 plus, both are present on the same moiety. Natural dyes. Now, if we try to even look at the going back to our natural dyes, the, there are a class of natural dyes which have very extended conjugated systems and then they may be having glycosidic linkages. Natural dyes are simply dye substances extracted from natural sources. Although the main source of dye was from early times, they have largely been replaced by synthetic dyes, uh, dyes in the present time, which are usually more reliable, cheaper and can be supplied more readily. Natural dyes still in use uh, include hemotoxin, carmine, orsine and litmus although synthetic varieties are also available for some of these. So, there has been a big debate whether to use good natural dye uh, or a new natural dye or to go over to synthetic dyes. We will not get into that debate with what to use, when to use, 
but I am simply introducing you to these two different classes of dyes which are popularly used and the structural details of these dyes are so different. So, you see that among the natural dyes we have indigoid, we have quininoid, we have dihydropyrin, we have anthocyanidines and so on and so forth. Whereas, in the case of natural uh, synthetic dyes we have triaryl methane dyes, we have again anthroquinoid dyes, we have xanthine dyes and we have thiazine dyes. Dyes. So, you see because of the structural detail of these dyes, they become different from one another. And it is more that the emphasis on natural dyes will be paid throughout this uh, lecture, because this is primarily a course which will reflect more information about the natural dyes. So, we will be now dealing more and more with natural dyes and their structural details. Nevertheless, it is important for you to get at least some overview of synthetic dyes, because unless and until you understand the, the structural difference between these two dyes, it is not possible for you to have an appreciation of this course.